Guess I'm a lot like you
as you sit and breathe, something or another is more vivid, something or another is more distinct, and it's quite obvious where your attention needs to go. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Vulpus EU Cup. We have an excellent game in the double ELIM uh, first round with Team Bulgaria versus Team Mercia. Now, these were both high ends of their respective seeds. Team Bulgaria coming out of Group F with a 100% win rate. They won against everybody. And then Team Mercia, um, not quite 100%, 80% win rate coming out of the Group E. Just the one loss to uh, Jirazuti who was the top seed out of that group. But these two teams are going to be facing off in a best of three, and I'm joined by Lucio Horde as my tier two and Rosie at the camera. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm excited to see this, to see this go out. I mean, it's round one. Things are early. Teams have stuff to prove. You know, they want it. Like, at this point, you, yeah, you might have a good schedule. If you have a good schedule beforehand, like you mentioned, you just kind of want to roll that through, especially into these – uh double elim tournament stage kind of a deal so i'm i'm excited to see both of these teams carry their momentum forward absolutely and looking in it seems that uh obviously with a lot of opponents that you have to prep for a lot of games in this tournament uh might be hard to necessarily find specific uh counter bands that you want we may see that later on games two and three but for now, it looks like we're just starting off with some strong meta bands. We see the Persephone, the Yemoja, and the Tsukuyumi uh, taken off the board. Yeah, and I mean, those are just decent bands. And the Morgan now being taken off the board as well. And I, I really, you know, the the first three we all kind of know about, it, you know, Tsukuyomi, Persephone, Yemoja, they've all been part of the band list for since they've been, in, since they've all been released respectively. Um but the Morgan is one of those that, you know, like, it's a 50-50 on whether or not you ban her. Because it's one of those characters that, on a good player, on a good Morgan player, it's absolutely devastating. It's absolutely dominating. And so, like, one of those things that you don't want to take the risk. Because if it's a good Morgan player, you kind of just gave them, and you gave them not necessarily to win, but a huge advantage that you won't have. And we see Guan Yu being the first pickup. What do you think about Guan Yu being first pickup here? So I think that now with a dive meta, Guan Yu is excellent at diving. He can flex into three different roles, support, solo, or jungle. Um, and just to piggyback on what you were mentioning, it, we do see the other two bands being the set and the raw. The Morrigan, I, I think, is a interesting character to ban early because um, even though you can, teams might pick it, etc., it also changes the way that you want to draft once you're mm -hmm. in the picks and bans because if you give gods that have excellent uh transformations for morrigan you may not want to pick those if there's a potential morrigan so we do see the response with the rama hercules i'm not sure where this hercules will go um again can flex into a few different roles a couple of different roles but uh maybe we see that uh team red getting their dual lane potentially early on yeah i mean hercules is weird because he's not a bad solo right but he's kind of like one of those characters that you pick up and you're like, why play him in the solo lane if you can play him in the support lane? And I, even though he does, I will say if Guan Yu does go into the solo lane, Hercules has a really good matchup in the Guan Yu because of his driving strike and driving strike innate enables him to interrupt the Talu assault, which is Guan Yu's main um way of way of doing wave damage. Now this this I really like coming out of here from a team bulgaria cupid sobek being the next one's picked up because now sobek Guan Yu, you're kind of like is he going into which one's going into the solo lane which one's going into the support lane 
Uh, I'm not support, but like, so, I mean, I guess Guan Yu could go support. He's not terrible there. But Sobek could do a really good solo lane too. So I really like that pickup. And then Cupid, and then if they do do Cupid and Sobek duo, it's something that can keep up with a Rom Hercules duo. Yeah, it is interesting to see that uh, picked up this early because, like you mentioned, so we do see the Cthulhu locked in. Obviously, went through picks and bans without getting picked, and these are those last picks uh, are usually the ones where you want to lock in the stuff that they're gonna ban in the second round uh, ban phase. So Cupid picked up for uh, blue, and then Cthulhu picked up for the red team. Now that tells me that this Hercules most likely is going to be the support. Cupid Hercules, I mean, so Rama Hercules, Rama has one of the best level one just clears in out of any hunter in the dual lane. Uh, sometimes it's nice because it allows you to get away with a more peel oriented defensive support. But when you double down and go with the Hercules, this means that this team is going to be 100% pressure from moment one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's why I really like Cupid Sobek, because Cupid Sobek can kind of stall out pressure, especially early on. You know, Cupid has a stun, Sobek has a knockup, has a has a uh, pluck. But talking about these bands that are coming out in the second ban phase, we see Humbots and Tho fanned out from the side of Team Mercia. Um, and then on the side of Team Bulgaria, we see Afro go away. I really like the Afro ban, and I like, I kind of like the Dove ban, but something that I'm questioning in my head right now is Nemesis is not banned out and you picked up Cthulhu. Like, yeah. that scares me. Excellent point. I, and I think that I would hope Kakito maybe uh, gets that, but it may be that since the... Uh, Oh, never mind. So Team Bulgaria is going to have the first pick after this. They do ban out the Nemesis themselves, so that that's why they are they they're worried that what the plan for uh, Team Mercia was is most likely Romeo trying to pick up the uh, Nemesis on their own team, but instead they go for the Habwa, that might be going to mid or again might be going to jungle. We've seen him in both of those roles and do very well. Yeah, and I mean, I really like that because I really like the way that team uh, Murcia kind of put it out where they're like, ban out the Nemesis. And if you don't ban out the Nemesis and you pick up the Nemesis, we can pick up Hebo. And Hebo is big Nem counter 101, right? Um, he has a knockup right. to disrupt the shield. He has a big slow. His ultimate just straight kills her. Like, it, it's a lot of things, that, a lot of tools that he has available to him. And you're almost baiting them into it. Now, a Wheelix being picked up here um i don't really like it too much there, uh, there's not a lot there's no leaps so far but there is a knockup coming out of sobek yeah a couple knockups from sobek is the only real synergy that uh, team bulgaria have with this awilish of course she is strong early just by herself and then late game she just presses four and blinks in but we do see the response with dodgy picked up by team mercia uh, Dodgy's interesting. If you look at this team comp, it's a great team comp to go into because Cupid doesn't have CC immunity, a Wheelish doesn't have CC immunity, and if you can force out the any of the CC immune alts from the rest of the team, there's plenty of uh, CC coming from Hercules, potentially even the Cthulhu once he goes into his uh, descent into madness that uh, you, you could get some pretty good value from this dodgy. And if you do manage to pull them in, if they don't get beads or don't have to use their ultimate, then that means that you have a Hebo ult just waiting for you to kill them. Yeah, and I mean, dodgy is just super good into a character like Cupid, into uh, particularly a character like Cupid. I'm just going to leave it there because really she can blink, let Cupid use his dash, and then use her three to get there her trickster spirit to just get right in his face and still deal all the damage that she needs to with her thousand cuts and things like that which is just a really good way of getting cupid out of a fight um cthulhu is also going to do a lot of zoning um it's honestly kind of funny because team murcia has a better comp for an awelix now that i'm thinking about it they have three knockups and three of the most three of some of the most significant knockups with a Hebo, a Hercules, and Cthulhu's ultimate form. So it's kind of interesting to see a Wheelix go the other way. 
and I mean, I don't know. I'm feel I'm feeling pretty confident about both sides, only because I'm pretty sure Team Bulgaria come in and they're saying we like this comp. We've done it before. I only need the Sobek. Like when you're picking in a Wheelix and you only have one knockup with no other source of getting that ultimate, you're pretty much feeling yourself. You have to be. Right, and and this does mean that uh, the the Awelish might want to put some early pressure onto this dual lane side, given that that's where you will have the Sobek, and that may help this dual lane kind of counteract the insane pressure that you would get from a Hercules Rama. Now, what do you think about the uh, matchup of the Guan to Cthulhu? It's one that we have started seeing a little bit more, but uh, do have the potential for the fear if you get enough stacks of madness to disrupt the Cthulhu or the Guan uh, Talu Assault. Looks like he just uses his blink there to get uh, just the teensy bit closer to the lane, make sure he gets all those minions. And I mean, you know, going back to the question. If it was any other player on this Guan Yu, I'd be like, this is going to be a bad time. Um, mainly because Cthulhu has a lot of disruptions for Talu Assault. You know, he has the mini stun. He has fear. Um, that's two sources of just interruption. We already see some aggression here into this dual lane. Wow. And it gets the plug. And he's just going to whack away. You know what? I got. I, I, we made a mistake. We said Rom was the ADC, but it seemed like right there Hercules was going to be the guy. Yeah, and surprising that Cupid just uh, keeps the beads there. Maybe a reaction time thing, because I do think that if Cupid was able to bead that pull, that he would have been fine. They used the shell, but uh, a little surprised as now we see a wheelish going in aggressively onto the dodgy, who does nice. make it out one hit. That's really unfortunate. Very nicely done. And I mean, like, yeah, there there is this there is this thing of like. I think Cupid didn't expect the full damage because it's kind of hard to gauge Hercules damage sometimes until you're getting whacked for like 80, 90 damage just from the straight up. Um, so maybe held on to beats. It's like, okay, I'm alive. I'll be okay. Clearly didn't work out there. And there we can kind of see talking about what we talked, what we were talking about earlier. Look at all the interrupts Cthulhu has for Guan Yu. So you'll have a tough time. Nice fluff into the Cupid. Cupid. Does not have heart bomb available. It's gonna dash in. Does find a heart bomb later. What comes out of by... Hercules? And that's just really nice. Ooh, Sova in trouble. Yeah, I think that maybe we already start seeing a little bit of potential communication issues with Team Bulgaria, who are, you know, Sobek had his pluck up, but Cupid didn't have his heart bomb up. You could have waited for that couple seconds, guarantee a little bit more damage, maybe the stun. Uh, but so far, just the one kill on the board for Team Mercia, and they are just content to sit back, farm, and let this dual lane just do the pressure that they need to do. That was beautiful peel by Hercules there. It's mm -hmm. not a character that's easy to peel with. Sometimes it's, uh, so I, I, I do see, uh, seems that he uh, that uh, Nighthawk is very comfortable. As we do see a gank on this uh, Cthulhu. Cthulhu is dead here. Doesn't have dash. I believe he had already used dash, which means that thing's on like a 10, 13 second cooldown, somewhere around there. He's not going to get it in time, so he just had kind of had the wiggle. Daji a little slower on the rotations, and that's just kind of the difference there um, when Awelix does get the ride, her jet biking, I guess, in this case. But um, yeah, it, it, she's allowed to kind of move around the map a little bit quicker, and that's C Cthulhu especially need to be aware of that because there's a lot of disruption that can come out of that Awelix. And that was the perfect timing right before he hit, hit level 5 so he didn't have that ult available as we do see Team Mercy, Team Mercy getting aggressive onto this red buff. Mm. Oh, and he flattens the Discordia with the boulder. Dodgy following over. I don't think the bleed damage is going to be enough so that does let Awelix get away. It looks like Nighthawk picks up that red buff, it's a successful red buff invade, as well as a kill onto the mid laner, Red Star. Ooh, no mana means that he's gonna come down and be dead, essentially. This is what I was talking about. Anybody else on this Guan Yu, I'd be a little concerned. But I've seen this man play Guan Yu several times, and each time it's, uh, it's quite... It's quite impressive, and so, like, at that point, you know, you it's hard, because once you get through the wall, you're kind of stuck. 
Um, and you never feel like you want to back away because, well, you just ulted, and, and it's one of those ults that's like, please press W. Um, but with that little mana, you just can't risk that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. As Nighthawk again gets a beautiful plus, while Night and while Red Star was in the invisibility, he predicted it out. The Apple Discord does connect, leaving Hebo low, and Nighthawk goes down. Both of those do go down for a nice counter engage, a two for nothing trade there. And looks like Team Bulgaria is down to chase with a oh, with yeah. this a wheelish in tow. She does force out the ult from Dodgy. Let's see if this creates enough space, but it looks like Dodgy's pretty surrounded. She's gonna have a tough time getting out of here. Yeah. That's a three for nothing trade right there. And Cthulhu kind of just drops it. Which I'm honestly surprised he doesn't even stay around just to put down the mire or anything like that across from the, the behind walls or anything like that. So he's forfeiting a lot of pressure with that decision, which is going to open up a Wheelix to do that blue buff, steal it away from him. And as a guardian in the solo lane, that blue buff is more essential than anything else, honestly, because your basics aren't going to do a lot of damage. Um, you kind of need that base stats, and I'm surprised that we're still going aggressive here. I guess it still works out. You do have a Hebo, but now that Hebo's in a really bad spot, gonna go ahead and pull out the carpet, try to retreat. But Cupid has made his way over, but don't worry, Nighthawk is gonna bring down to excavate and dig out Cupid's great. Not Cupid. Yeah, Cupid. Cupid's great. Yeah. Huh, I almost got tripped up there. My bad. So I did see, so it was interesting because Red Star did pull back there. It looks like Sobek got the pluck. Red Star, full health and mana, maybe was concerned that Hebo was going to ult into her. But if she, if he was going to ult into her, that would mean that he would have to go in between or maybe even into the tier 2 tower of uh, Team M Bulgaria. I think if uh, instead of dashing backwards, if Discordia there had just committed along with the Sobek, then that could have turned that one for one into a one for zero. They do still come out with the red buff, so that is a net win for Team Mercia, having gotten a one for one trade and the red buff, and they still keep the timer, meaning that Team Bulgaria is going to have to be very mindful, as well as Rama picking up the purple buff there on the back off. But I don't think there's any way for them to punish this. Sobek does use his ult. Rama's beads forced out by the ult from um, Awilish, but it looks like Sobek is in trouble. Wow, very nice from that disco. Ooh, this is a double kill. Oh. oh, that blink was beautiful. Just in time, Dodgy blinks out. Uh, now Hebo has his beads forced, and he's all by himself, but he'll dish out enough damage to take one back onto the Sobek, but I would take that trade any day. Support for mid laner, get that Hebo down, and we get the red buff counter invade onto the side of Team Bulgaria. Unfortunately, Cupid misses the heart bomb. That means the rest of that engage is over. This is a case of, again, we talked about it a little bit earlier. A wheel has really good rotation speed. Um, that means you can't stay too long. And that was a matter of Rom stayed a little bit too long in that area. And that allowed um, a wheel to get there in time to follow up on Sobek's engage. Disco made that perfect kind of like rotation from the mid lane to drop an apple discord onto them like that was really 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 good job and with a two level lead now in the jungle dodgy is one of those characters that she feels pretty bad when she's like she tends to get behind and feels pretty bad until you just use your alt and then you just become an alt bot late game um she does use her alt just to get out and every time now we see she's been having to be forced into her ult defensively. Because now the rest of Team Mercia comes over and the Cthulhu is in big form. We'll get that kill onto Guan Yu, onto Sagar. As now the the disengage, they do get the blue buff. Um, Team Bulgaria do get the blue buff, but at the cost of Sagar, who had a pretty decent lead before this. That makes uh, even out. It looks like Sobek was able to secure the blue buff on their own, so that's going to be pretty big. And here we go, Rom in trouble again. Awelix rotating all the way over. And that's just unfortunate. I don't think he gets out of that. Yeah, he was the closest but one to support was Hebo, and he was so far away. And if Hebo came in, he would have died himself as well. So it looks like another, you know, attempted red buff invade. And, and this time, 
Team Bulgaria are wise to the fact that this is going on. Now, Team Mercia smartly have three at their own red buff because they know that Bulgaria had the timer. Another great pluck from Nighthawk, forcing a Wheelish to just run away, having lost half her health just with a couple abilities. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it seems that every time Mercia does a good rotation, you have Prakit on the other and finding, you know, something on the other side. And that's just something you have to be very, very uh, aware of when you're playing against an Awelix who can rotate so quickly. Now, we do see an engage, and there goes Awelix making it turn. Present Snow with a nice gravity surge. Daji unable to pluck anybody, probably burn some beads, though. And a rotation from Cthulhu will secure a kill onto the Discordia. Yeah, and now Guan Yu forced to ult out as well. I think that this this an engage. Although you do get uh, you do get a knock up onto the Hercules. That's not the target you want to be pulling in. Feels bad when you pull in the Hercules and he's like, "Whoa, this is awesome! I didn't even need to blink to get here." Yeah, it's just. <laughs> That's a really good rotation. I really like the rotation coming out of Cthulhu was able to get there. And it's like you said, you don't really want to pull the Herc. Herc is going to get out um, early on, especially. He has that health. Um, they did start up Pyro here, and they do get it, but they might lose some money. Nope, it seems like Juan, you might be the one to go down. It was a good thought from Sagar, but no ultimate and five people there. He's lucky if he gets out of this one. He does have the healing, but Dodgy is there to clean it up. Meanwhile, though, with that, it looks like the uh, Team Bulgaria is going onto the other side of the map and starting Gold Fury. Cupid ults it, uh, but Rama's in the air. He might be able to snipe it. He does. Yes, he does. That is really good awareness from the Rom to find that moment, but it seems like Arquito has a better awareness on when there's Hercules is at and getting him. And Hebo now gonna go ahead and make sure that we trade mid for mid as they trade out kills there. Yeah, and this is still, I would say, net win for Mercy again. Getting that Gold Fury, even though you do lose a couple members, you got the Pyro on the other side, so there's no real response that Team Bulgaria can do on the other side of the map, as well as you, you do trade out that Hebo for their other mid laner, so that's basically even, and I'm okay if you lose, uh, you know, one player for the Gold Fury, that's still pretty worth Yeah, and I mean, it's, it really is a Gold Fury and a Pyro, like, going those back to back is pretty 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 well done on the side of Mercia to kind of clean up on both ends of the map. I don't like that they engaged after stealing it um, because they didn't really have to. Like, they stole it. That's it. Drop it. Let's go back to lanes. But they engaged and that's where they kind of lose a little bit of that momentum. Um, it's not the worst. Like you said, it's not fatal. It's just something that, you know, you didn't really need to do. It, it, it kind of does turn out to be more of a mistake, really. Now we do see the combo with the Sobek Pluck onto the Awilish, but this is a big shutdown kill onto the Awilish, who was 5-0 before this. She ends up having her first death, giving a ton of gold back to Daji, and eliminating what was a 2-level lead, now to just a 1, maybe half level lead. But Sagar does manage to clean up the Hebo. So far, a 2-for-2, two two, even trade. And health bar seems strong enough on both sides, but both sides will back off. Oh! oh. This is the system. last. Very, very close. That's that strength. Of, if once Rama gets ahead, he's got that level lead. Even though he's died twice and Cupid's uh, got one kill over him, uh, just having the pressure that the dual lane had from moment one allowed Rama to get, get the level lead, which is maybe going to lead to him just poking out this tower down on its last legs at 30% HP. Yeah, and this is the issue though. Like, I was just about to comment on this. Don't be, you just use ultimate, I would not push up. Um, a Wheelix is gonna be there. You're lucky that you have Hercules getting in there, but now he has no driving strike to avoid the pluck. And that means that Kirkito will get a kill. And that's exactly, you know, using that ultimate. Now he might be in danger here in this duo lane. They're gonna choose to back off after he retreats the tier one. Yeah, forcing the beads out of that Rama is pretty, it's pretty big as well. That means he's very vulnerable. Um, uh, until his ultimate comes up, and that means that he's not going to be able to use that ultimate as aggressively unless he wants to be skirting with death. 
Is Daji just pull in the Guan Yu, but he is totally fine. I think they've done a great job neutering the threat of this Daji so far into the mid game. Guan Yu yeah. does blink back in. Meanwhile, in mid lane, this uh, kill trade between Habwa and Discordia. It looks like that Habwa used his ult, just probably damaged that Discordia enough to, to grab the kill. <laughs> Another hurt. kill onto Krikito. It's staying a little too long under that tier 1 tower. The Herc damage is real. Herc damage and great target priority, honestly. Just like saying, you know what? I don't care about the Sobek because you can think, hey, let me pull out the Sobek so that way, you know, uh, they can't tank the tower. But instead they decide, hey, look, I'm just going to look for a Wheelix because I can just straight up kill her. And that was just a really nice uh, call there. Um, and I mean, the Daji pull on Guan Yu, look, you don't have Brawlers. You don't have Brawlers. Like, if you don't have Brawlers, don't pull Guan Yu. Man's gonna just get pulled, and then he's gonna heal. And then he'll be okay. And that's exactly what ends up happening. He's okay, and he almost turns that fight into his favor. And he kind of does, because by being able to push out that Daji, opens up that mid-tower, which gets which gets torn down by Bulgaria. So very, very nicely played on the side of Bulgaria here. Absolutely right. And now with uh, both objectives coming up very soon on each other in terms of we do see the blink uh, from the Hercules misses the driving stack. He's been very good with his plucks. He does get Discordia again. But she's pretty safe. This time though, Daji's up and Habwa is ready to go down into the tower, ulting in to get the kill. He yeah, and seems like he's going to make it out. And Daji plucks Sobek and that is what saved the Hebo's life right there. Um, Because Sobek was barreling at, at Hiwa and him it, him getting plugged by Daji just kind of stops him right in his tracks and that was just really really nice right there just a small little thing there that we kind of almost didn't get to see off camera just happened very quickly yeah and Daji. now with the Guan Yu over onto this left side uh it looks like team Mercia is not comfortable enough to open up the the gold fury they lost the Cthulhu off screen which means that now the numbers advantage is on the side of Team Bulgaria and they're gonna start trying to bait this Sony. That means that Hercules is around and he has his boulder. So I guess yeah. they'll just settle for oracles. Maybe not even, they look like they're about to split them. Just the dance going around in the Gold Fury now. No, or Hebo's there to make sure they get those oracles. But I mean, another part is that, like, there's a lot of good secure coming out. Oh, man, we get to see the ultimate descendant of madness comes out. Apple finds Hebo. Hebo will go down, and that's pretty early on. That might be doom and gloom here for Team Mercia. Rom in the air finds two. Herc is poked out. Cthulhu as well. Boulder gets thrown. Finds one, not enough damage. Guan Yu gonna go ahead and do the zoning. This opens up this gold fury as they do have a lot of out of combat healing for Team Bulgaria. Very good, very good job there finding that Hebo early on. Yeah, and you're absolutely right about the, the healing making such a big difference. The entire plan, it looked like, of Team Mercia, once they lost the Habwa, Habwa didn't get to ult that fight. He just got golden appled and then he just died so without relics without being able to ult uh he was the rest of the team didn't have kill potential they were just looking to try to poke out team bulgaria so they couldn't feel safe doing the objective but they have two healers on their side so it's never an issue this yeah. is here trying to get the steal he is not able to confirm it as bulgaria do get the pyromancer looks like off screen yeah, so it's a jungle for jungle trade out, different parts of the map. Dodgy here, uh, and it looks like a wheelish got kind of caught out trying to engage on the Habwa, but Hercules was there to support him, and that led to a turnaround onto her. I mean, like, I'll, I, I'll kind of want to go back a little bit to that gold here, and it even extends to what happens here in the Pyromancer. When they lose Hebo. The entire side of Team Mercia drops every single ultimate that they have, which kind of means that they don't have the ability to steal anymore. They don't have the ability to contest Pyro as much anymore. And that's kind of why I like the call from Team Bulgaria to take advantage of that. Now we do see Rom go up in the air, needs the third, does Ooh. find it, and Cupid will go down. But yeah, 
Uh, when you have a comp that consists of Rob and Hercules, you don't need to hard defend gold. You can just back off. When you lose somebody, just back off, drop the ward, be like, okay, as long as we have vision, we can contest. Yeah, and, and allow and using those alts is what allowed Bulgaria to safely feel okay in pulling that gold. But I, it, Mercia responding very well, pulling a tier two and a tier one, tier two and duo, tier one and mid, uh, really opening up the map and opening up uh, Phoenix on the left side, which is the Phoenix that you want to be kept the most protected. And now we see Krakito uses Gravity Surge for the buff here, but it won't be enough as Daji and Rom able to put her down. Lazy Bat gets caught by Disco, puts out a, quite a bit of damage. Now Daji and Rom might be looking for some reciprocation, but they're going to back off. Rom has no mana, and Daji is pretty low. Hercules, though, didn't get the memo. He's going to kind of push the, push the envelope here. Yeah, and he's at this point he's got, he's uh, almost finished with his uh, gauntlet of Thebes. He's already got Sledge online. He is a tanky boy, and it's going to be very hard to do anything to him. So he's pretty safe here, as Guan Yu trying to step up around his own blue buff that's about to spawn needs a little help from his friends. As Herc does pluck in the Sobek, Sobek forced to alt out. Not quite. So he saves his ult as uh, Cthulhu does ult. Looks like they're they're able to to kind of disengage until Yagog comes in with the ult, cleans up that Discordia. But will most likely pay oh. with his life. No, his beads were off. Yeah, and now now after this one for one trade with all those ultimates being used for Team Mercia. Now this is the time that uh, Team Bulgaria can potentially re-engage. Zaji looks like she misses uh, the pluck on her ult. These are very low health bars. Guan Yu healing is going to be so important if they're able to pick that up. They picked off this the the Cupid, and now it looks like a full turnaround as Rama is trying to chase out the Sobek. The juke boots are good, but not good enough. It is now it might be a full deicide here for Team uh, Mercia onto Team Bulgaria. Super duper nice. I mean, Daji didn't necessarily miss the pluck. She just killed the person she was plucking in the beginning there. Um, that was just really, really, really good on Team Mercia to kind of push the envelope once they realized that they took out some key components. You know, being able to take out a, the damage early on really helped them is particularly taking out a Wheelix and Disco means that they don't have to worry too much about that extra bursty damage. Cupid, you know, outside of his ultimate, isn't heavy, heavy on the burst and heavy on the AOE. You know, it's really just the heart bomb. Um, so that was really good on Team Mercia to kind of just pull it back. The only thing that I don't really like at the back end of that is that they don't go and do anything with it really. They're not, they're not doing enough of the objectives. They could have taken out more towers off the map. They could have done started up FG or positioned around it. Instead, they forfeit that pressure and allow Team Bulgaria to move back into that pit and set up some wards. Yeah, I think if you, uh, if you notice the amount of space that the front line is creating from Team Mercia is what's really winning them those fights. Cupid is having to be like literally in the other lane from the rest of his team because of the amount of space that's created by Cthulhu as he is back into madness but this time he is taking too much damage we do see the dodgy ult's going to get the pull on to the cupid who didn't have beads had to use it last time so good turnaround <laughs> as Habwa again flattens habwa has got been on a mission he has found this Discordia every time, and he has just ulted her on cooldown. And and the, the carries are doing such a great job of picking out the damage, and that's not even, I don't want to dissuade like the work that Hercules is doing, or disparage it, because Hercules has been creating these opportunities for him to get the kill. I like the call here to go ahead and try the Phoenix Siege, get the Phoenix probably, and even if you don't get the Phoenix, you have enough time to kind of pull back into the Fire Giant. Especially with um, with Cthulhu coming back in three seconds, he can now get the Fire Giant buff. So you might still have time here to start up FG. Yeah, and that was a right there. They still had five seconds and a lot of pretty strong health bars. Potentially could have tried to go for the end, 
but they told the safe play they're gonna go get a guaranteed fire giant um as well as now the minions coming in the left side taking that phoenix down to half health cupid's there to clean that up and now guan's stepping in seeing if he can do something unfortunately he's not able to get the steal with his ult this means that he's gonna be dead as well that's gonna make their siege or their siege defense so much more uh difficult as again yagog has been hunting these kills with his ultimate he knows how much damage he is able to do and that's a lot yeah and that's really unfortunate here now we're going to turn to this left lane trying to get the phoenix they could if they get a pick here maybe two they can go for the end call they have fire waves in solo lane which a lot which means that they can even wait for this siege until that fire wave pulls the pulls one of the members from bulgaria away but honestly i would just go for the siege it's a half health phoenix you, you've got Rom. Rom's going to make sure work of that. Cuban drops the field of love. Cthulhu's going into the back line. Rom is in the air, which I do not like. I'm not going to lie. I would prefer if he just focused the Phoenix here. No point in going in the air when they're going to run back to Fountain here. Um, yeah. Now they can go into that mid. Yeah, all three Phoenixes are going to go down here for Team Bulgaria. And with everyone spawning back up, now it's just uh, waiting for some of these fire waves to come in. They'll pick up a gold fury. They might split the map and send someone over. It looks like Dodgy's just picking up some buffs. They'll be so strong for this next fight. It's going to be very difficult for Team Bulgaria to do anything against this team with all three uh, Phoenixes down. Yeah, this is going to be really, like, a, it's a tough situation. Honestly, at this point, I'm going to call it what it is. It's a 99 percenter. It's one of those games where really right now it's Team Mercy is the drop. Because right now with as many towers on the map that Team Mercy has, which is a total of five, and two on each one of the side lanes, you kind of need the... You would need to force more than two mistakes on Team Mercy because it's still relatively early in the game, so the respawn timers aren't going to be monstrous. So you have to force like two back-to-back -back mistakes to even get yourself back into the game per se. So right now, Team Mercy just needs to play it safe, play it clean, get in there, get Hiwa onto that Titan, let him ult it, and you pretty much have a GG right then and there. I mean, you have two really good ults. Now, clearly they got the memo as a Wheelix does try to find Hiwa, does force out the ultimate, which means not as much damage, but now you have 50 seconds missing out on one of your team members for this defense. Yeah, and Hiwa with the Soul Gem means that he is basically at full health again. He is not Blink. at all concerned. Yikes, dude. This man blinked the Guan Yu. I don't even know what you do at that point. That's a dead Titan. If I've ever seen one, there's just nothing they'll be able to do. Yeah, good game. That was excellently played. Strong uh, early start from Bulgaria. They were both kind of holding tight with each other until that final fight, which got the D aside and really opened up the, the rest of the game. That was really, I, I, it was great, well played from everyone on uh, Team Mercia. Their front line creating so much space and their back line just doing what the back line carries need to do. Habwa every time just finding those priority kills onto the squishy mid laner or to the jungler. Krakito started off as a good early game, a wheelish, but got very quickly neutered. She started off as 5 0 and 1, and after that, she only was able to pick up, you know, four more kills, but eight more deaths. So, yeah, and that's just one of those situations, you know. Um, the Wheelix might not have been the best pick here, but I will tell you one thing what I want to see going into game two is that they ban out the, the Hebo. The Hebo was super powerful, and clearly um Iagog was able to find priority picks find the damage and he was really just kind of you felt his impact he was super impactful in every single team fight yeah i absolutely agree i think the um it's tough because the front line was creating so much space as well but Hobwell was able to get in there because of that space and yeah early game you saw him die after those engages, but he was mo the only real fight that Team Bulgaria was able to take away was 
the fight where Havwa was killed without having used his ult early in the in the fight. That was what allowed them to get the Gold Fury and get uh, the Pyromancer really come back from the game. So I agree. I think that Havwa would be a big pick. As we now go on to a little break until we uh, get up uh, game two. See you in a little bit. Welcome back to game two of this uh, best of three Bulpis EU Cup Team Bulgaria versus Team Mercia. We saw an explosive game where after a pretty good, well contested early game, saw a huge deicide from Team Mercia, which allowed them to open up the map and finish that game in convincing fashion. Now, Lucio, you were telling me that you want this uh, Habwa out of there. Any other things that you think that Team Bulgaria should have should be doing here in these picks and bans to adjust? Um, Hawa, Hercules, those would be the two that I would be looking for. Either to pick up or to ban out. Like you can, you can pick up one or the other here because you know Team Mercy. I think they decide here on first pick, which means that they'll only be able to get one of those things, and which leaves it open for Team Bulgaria to grab the other. But Clearly, um, Team Bulgaria didn't have as many answers as they may may have wanted for that type of um, that type of aggression because Hercules is able to kind of create that zoning potential, and then um, he was just putting out massive amounts of damage, being in your backline, which creates really that space for Rom to exist and do really really well. So far, it looks like they're not going to ban out either. We see a Ra and a Set ban. And then we see a Persephone and a Tsukiyomi ban from Team Mercia. But um, I mean, going on, I mean, we also see the Sobek. We also see the Sobek ban. So clearly, Team Mercia did not really want to see the Sobek again. And we see the Hercules ban on the other side. So we're gonna see two different Guardians at least from both sides. They could run it back, but we are at least gonna see two different Guardians. Now, I'd be curious to see what 
um, Team Mercy is going to pick up here first. Uh, I would hope that they pick up. Well, I, not necessarily I would hope. That would be a lot. But maybe if they still want the Hewa to turn back to that, Rom would still be a good first pick here as well. So, whichever one. Yeah, I think that we did see the Rom first pick up uh, last game for Team Mercia. And this time, the, with the first pick, the hub was open. The, there's a lot that basically can be traded out. It does look like they followed your advice, getting rid of the Hercules, and we see the Yamoja. Yamoja was banned, I believe, in the first game, and allowing that to get through means that... Um, now we'll have Nighthawk on a, one of the strongest supports. Very different playstyle from previously, but I'm sure he can run that uh, just as well. Is now on the flip side, we do see the Morrigan. That was also banned out by Team Mercia in Game 1. Uh, likely going to Red Star. He may have uh, just demonstrated very strong work with that Morrigan. Getting that early, like we talked about in, in the first set of uh, picks and bans, does change the way that the other team has to draft. So we'll see how this with this pairing up with this Morrigan. Yeah, I mean, definitely one of those things that if you grab Mori, um, if you grab Mori, now you don't want the Hebo because now you just have to deal with the Hebo and that doesn't feel good. Um, I would have honestly preferred to see the Mori band instead of the Tsukiyomi, in my opinion. Uh, mainly because if you are going to run Hebo and things like Yamoja, you kind of just stop Tsukiyomi. Um, Yamoja is also a little weird. I don't, I'm going to be real with you. I don't like Yamoja first pick because there's a lot of, there's a lot of counterplay to Yamoja if you know how to lock her down. And Ratatasker and Jingwei and Morgan are going to be really good at locking her down while also escaping that River's Rebuke. The Morgan, not so much, but she can always just transform. Rat has the ult. But still, that doesn't feel terrible when you can use that ult to re-engage. Um, then we do see the Hebo ban. I mean, that that that's one of those things, I guess. Yeah, that's that's very smart. It I would expect from the from Team Bulgaria now to get some very strong dive heavy frontliners. Jingwei and Morgan both are very slippery uh, in different ways. Morgan sometimes she just plays herself as an assassin, not really in the back line, but kind of just doing an, something else. She can get in there, use her kit, and then transform into whatever else she needs to. Could be the Guan Yu, could be the Ratatosker. And then Jing Wei, able to be so safe with her kit that uh, she doesn't really need much peel from any of her front line, meaning that frees up her front line to go dive heavy. As we see that Team Marcia banning out the Sun Wukong, one of the league's best divers at this point in the meta and then Kabraken was an interesting interesting pick uh to ban actually since we're not exactly sure as we do see the apollo locked in so it is going to be double adc from team bulgaria i wonder where these picks are going to be going now apollo is going to go into the solo lane uh or the jungle so it's going to be either rat solo or jungle or apollo solo or jungle i assume Apollo does relatively well in the solo lane. Um, and this is this is what I'm afraid of. You just gave Morgan four great ults on your side of Team Mercia. You have Yamoja, Guan Yu, Kamazots, and Baba Yaga. That Kamazots ult is going to be super potent in a, in, in, for Morgan. Um, so is Guan Yu. Because they kind of do similar things. Guan Yu has a stun, but Kamazots is kind of invulnerable during that period. Um, the last pickup... Yeah, we yeah. see the Chang'a last. And this is going to turn out really, really interesting now because um, that's a lot. You don't really have a front line here on the side of uh, Team Bulgaria. You um, you really have the Chang'a maybe, depending on where she goes to give you that front line. But I assume she's going to be support. I guess you have three flex picks here. We know probably for a fact Jingwei going into left into the ADC role. Um, we know that Morgan Pro is gonna go into the mid lane. No wait, that's a that's a yeah. Sad. Morgan's going in the Morgan's going in the mid lane. It looks like Sagar is piloting Chunga in the solo lane, and it looks like uh, Krakito is actually going to be running Apollo in the jungle with Mono as uh, Rat support. 
Yeah, I was completely trolling. I, I completely, I didn't even read the names. I thought this, for some reason I went straight into tournament mode and then I was like, wait a minute, I know these players and I know where they go. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> moving past that, yeah, this is gonna be really interesting here because Shanghai in the solo lane is pretty, pretty I, I like it. Um, Apollo in the jungle is something that people don't really expect and respect in a lot of ways because Apollo with his ultimate can be anywhere. His Mesmerize is devastating if he just catches you off guard with it, especially if he's going to Mesmerize for Morgan to hit you with her two, get that extra damage, and then he just hits you with the one. You're kind of just going to be... Um, you're just going to be kind of nuked in, in a second. So this is going to be really tough for Team Mercia. It's always one of those things, when you're a team going against an unorthodox comp, it, it makes the mental part of the game so much harder because now you have to be more aware like there's a lot of things that you do in smite that's autopiloting and you're like oh this is how it just works this is how we're gonna do it etc 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 but when you're going against an unorthodox comp you gotta constantly be thinking of how things are gonna work out yeah and we see an interesting start yemoja using her riptide at level one to kind of push the minions back so that they're able to get a little bit of minion pressure uh, just from from the way that the minions are walking into the lane. This means that despite not getting the Alpha Harpy, they're delaying the level twos from Team Bulgaria long enough so that they may be able to hit level two at the same time as the, uh, the team in Bulgaria. And they do actually manage to get level two first um, Riptide pulling back the rat, but this is, they're so far underneath their tower. But I'm really worried about this Kamazots. This Kamazots, if he catches the, the Apollo anywhere in the jungle by himself, he can 100 to 0 that Apollo very quickly. And with not much Apollo can do about it. This Kamazots looking to get involved early. Oh, Unfortunate no. Riptide. So that's Nighthawk kind of trolling his own jungler. If he, <laughs> he hadn't placed that, I think that would have been a kill. Oh, but... no, because he knocks back the uh, the ROM and the Kamazots. Yeah. Oh, yeah. boy, that's a big oof, man. And that's the danger of Yamoja, too, when you're trying to do the Yamoja plays. Because if you're not, you're like, you got to call it out as soon as you do it. And it might be the one going down as we do see the rat come around. And he's going to go ahead and land down on the ground to get the kill here. Kamazots makes a rotation in, but he might be the next one dead. Catches his vampire bats for the sustain. Means that he's alive, but we do see Apollo going into the sky looking for the damage. Finds it. River's rebuke not locking them in, but still manages to get the kill for Mono. But now it's a 2v1 situation, and I don't think Yamoja wins this one as she's going to have to back away. Baba Yaga making the rotation over saying hey wait stop please get the house bringing it down some fire as well it's getting hot in here gonna have to get out yeah and you know the the concern with this apollo oh my god Ooh. baba yaga barely kills the apollo but does manage to finish off sagar huge rotation from iagog Again, that's what we saw him doing game one, just like going in and being able to to do the work. And with Baba Yaga, different, kind of different character, but the same mentality. Late game, you're so potent, so much damage, and you got the tools to get in there, and he did. Yeah, I mean, that, again, that was just really, really well played. Really good rotation coming out of uh, Mercia to kind of find something there on the other end. But so far, things are pretty even. Like, we've seen good plays coming out of both teams. Um, I'm really interested to see how this unorthodox comp carries over into the late game because they do have two ADCs, which gives them a lot of siege potential, gives them a lot of split push potential, especially, um, especially with the Apollo able to kind of get him out of a situation where maybe a normal split pusher would be... Um, would be caught out but yeah and we'll we haven't seen a lot of apollo in the current meta 
But back when he was being played, that was the bane of every team's existence. He would have that split push Apollo, just wherever, oh, you're trying to have a team fight? Don't worry, he's pushing down a tower somewhere. And then, oh, he just decides to come on into the team fight. Or if you send someone back to counteract him, he's out of there. It's really annoying playstyle to deal with, kind of like that old Loki playstyle. As we do see Zage able to finish off the Rama with the airstrike. And in mid lane, Rat having to try to peel off this Kamazot. Will Kamazot's Nanda. That's a lot kill. of damage. But now, Yamoja caught out as, again, that lack of mobility for her. And Baba forced into the ult. Same with uh, Kamazot's Apollo. Maybe looking to come back in. Romeo does finish off Ratatosker. And he's here for the big stun onto, onto Sagar, meaning that's a one for two trade. And there's Kirito doing the thing that Apollo does best. He's like, ah, oh, man, that's that fight. It's over. I, I guess I go to a different lane and find farm. And that's what exactly what he's doing. Um, he, he finds a little bit of farm on the other end. And now it seems like Jingwei is just going to go on a tear and pick up another kill. Looking for Kamazot's Rom here to back him up and say, no, 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 you stop that. And now we're going to go ahead and take your purple because you need to stop right now. Yeah. So ultimately, even though, yes, you can go to another lane and get pressure into another lane as Apollo, you still can't counteract the fact that two of your players were missing. There's still going to be pressure there. As we see this Apollo going into trans, uh, I like this build path for the jungler here, just knowing that once he gets that online, he hits like a truck. Pretty good, uh, maybe going crit on him as well, which means, or he could just go full ability based, allowing Jing Wei to maybe flex into the crit that it's in her kit already. I do want to see this Guan Yu definitely pick up thorns and go into that backline uh, because that thorns is going to be so effective against those hunters. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's one of those things that, especially Apollo of the Jungle, can get that transcendence without worrying about sustain, because that's what the Assassin's Blessing is for. Um, it allows him to kind of get a nice power spike. And then, it's like you said, if he wants to build a crit, he can still, as we do see an engagement here in mid. Yamoja going to get caught out one more time. Drops the river's rebuke. Riptide to get her out. Does find her way away. Kamazot's going bad out of hell as Rat taking the heat, but doesn't really care until Baba Yaga hits with some unruly magic. Baba Yaga going to go ahead and throw down a potion as well, putting Morgan to sleep. Apollo is here, gets a nice mesmerize, looking for a nice one airstrike, finds a little bit of damage, but the kill goes to Krakito. But don't worry, they'll just trade out and Sage will pick up another as Krakito goes down. Now Rom is making a rotation, but a nice Chang Ah ult will stop him in his tracks. But don't worry, Trazodone gonna go with the Astro Barrage. He finds one, and that's all he does find, but finds the kill nonetheless. Now Cavalry Charge comes out of Guan Yu. They're looking for that mid lane. They're looking for some damage. Up and down does mean that Romeo finds his Juliet as Chang Ah will go down. Surrender Vote goes ahead and gets started up. A little bit of a, a little bit of a turned situation there for Team Bulgaria as Team Mercy are able to pull that one out. Yeah, that's an unofficial deicide there. Uh, just a bloodbath of a fight. It is constant, uh, everyone rotating in and getting so much value. That Krikito Apollo really showing that, you know, he is, he is online and ready to play. Now, however, because of these low respawn timers, that does mean that the team uh, Bulgaria is up and able to be here to contest the Pyromancer as Rat able to dash out of the Emoja ultimate. I have not seen a lot of good value from Nighthawk's Emoja, I'm not gonna lie. Oh. However, uh, that Riptide, that Riptide does get Red Star where he's trying to run away, runs into a Riptide, gets thrown backwards. I'm not sure if he was actually in stealth there. He might have been, and I think he got uh, revealed there. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It does open this Pyromancer up now that Rat's a little poked out. Chang'a's getting zoned out by Guan Yu. Rat going up into the world tree, but they dropped the Pyromancer almost 
immediately, which means that now Rat has no ultimate. But who does have ultimate? This Apollo going for the Rom here in that left lane. Finds him, looking for a damage. Nice mesmerize into a knockup means that Krakito able to pick up the kill. But Rat will pay with his life. Looks like Changa might be the next one. Talu Assault unable to find any ticks of damage. But don't worry again. Hyagog is going to find the damage that he needs. And Pyro is going to go ahead and get started. But on the other end, Gold Fury is getting started. This is a lot tougher now due to the changes that they did. But it does seem that Gold Fury is going to go down in trade for the Pyro. And I'm I'm not I'm not about it. I'm not about it. I would prefer to get gold over pyro any day. Yeah, but now Camo's out the tier. Unfortunately Jingwei being so safe, is able to use the airstrike to get out of there. And not enough damage from Diamond, meaning that uh, they yeah, they unfortunately they got two kills on the right side, they got the Pyromancer, but traded out very well by Team Bulgaria. Krakito has been doing so much work on this Apollo. 4, 2, and 5. Not a character that you normally <laughs> expect to be doing this kind of work out of the jungle, but uh, he's been making it work with a two-level lead now on to, uh, over the Kamazot. Yeah, again, Apollo does allow for a lot of pressure. You saw that he can give good setup. It's exactly what I was telling you about the Mesmerize. Like, being able to set up the Mesmerize with another form of CC, especially one that's not DDR, um which is that they don't it doesn't get reduced in time or um or demi not ddr dr diminishing returns yeah um not dance dance revolution i'm sorry guys <laughs> meanwhile it does seem like i is gonna pick up another kill in the mid lane and take that mid tower but yeah being able to follow up a mesmerize with another form of cc does mean that you pretty much lock down whoever you need to yeah, and now this three-level lead coming in for the mid laner, Iagog, is so oppressive. When Morrigan, she has to be able to have levels to go in and do her damage and still have enough tankiness from getting uh, her level lead that uh, she can get up. But now, when she's so behind, this means that she's basically not a character for the foreseeable future. There, there he goes again, finds another kill. River's Rebuke does force out two ultimates. Beautiful Changa ult though, does lock down two two people, gets the beads, but not long enough. They do, uh, are, they are able to shut down Krakito, uh, take him off the map, which is a big play for Team Bulgaria. Uh, sorry, for Team Mercy, Mercy against Team Bulgaria. As now they're looking to potentially siege up the tier two in mid. I don't know about this. They do have some auto combat healing with the emoji and the guan. As uh, looking at Red Star, just able to sneak a doodle out of there, just in front of the faces of all five members of Team Mercia. He's able to get in there and just get a stun, and that's enough to hold off this this push. Ooh, double stun there. But now Rat dies for it. <laughs> Morgan was yeah. not following that up anytime soon. She was like, mm, I did my stuff, that's it. Yeah, that's a, that's a little unfortunate. Feels bad when you get a beautiful CC and there's nothing there and you just end up paying with your life. They do trade out Romeo for the tier 2 tower. It looks like Diamond is also going to end up falling on the backside, which means that Bulgaria has a good counter push. As they're running down this uh, this Rama, and they transform into the Baba Yaga themselves. Now, no Omi for Yamoja means that she's going to be going down. And I would go for a Fire Giant right here. Yagog, the only member left. Looks like they're trying to get the Tier 1 as well as go right to the Fire. Yeah, the Fire is the right call. Forget the Tier 1. You can get it later. Yeah, you can get it later after the Fire Giant. I mean, that turned out to be a deadly situation there for um, Team Mercy to kind of pull in on that mid lane when they really didn't need to. They could have done what exactly what you just said. Turn into a Fire Giant instead. I mean, not Tier 1, Tier 2. And instead, they try to take that fight. But the one thing you got to respect that's coming out of Team Bulgaria is they have a lot of long-range poke. Because they're not going for a traditional jungler, they're not going for a traditional solo laner, they have four ranged gods with a dude who can throw acorns at you. Um, and can dash, so he technically has a lot of long range poke as well. 
into that, that turned out to be a fatal mistake for Team Valencia as that as, as Team Bul Bulgaria did have one that chase potential once they got any picks and then also the lockdown potential on anybody they can catch out aka the yamoja which is what i was saying earlier that i can that i'm concerned with when it's a yamoja first pick because there's a lot of ways to lock down yamoja where she can't get away and if you Follows do in that the air. then you kill her follows in the air kind of scouting around uh, again a lot of good information Krakito's trying to figure out where he's gonna go down does pick the Yamoja in mid she does have enough Omi to use her Riptide to get out forcing the ult as well she barely makes it out with her life and she has a little bit of Omi left to just sustain but she's gonna have to back off here which means that this uh, siege defense is uh, not well but looks like Rama up in the air Trying to snipe down the Gold Fury, unable to confirm it as Bulgaria do get the Gold Fury for themselves. Or the Oni Fury, rather. This Oni Fury is going to give them a good amount of pressure to be able to try to get some of these other lanes. But it looks like Team Mercia is ready to fight. They're they're still pushing up. They they want to they want to take this scrap from the jungle. Oh no, you can't do that as well on you in the late game. You just get burst, which is exactly what we see. Um, I don't know why he goes in like that. And then he lazy back, sliding the rat ult away. Not gonna really get anything though, as he just realizes it as he's back. And he's probably like, I'm gonna back here. Wait a minute, there's a rat. And, I'm gonna... and he just runs. Uh, this tier two, like once you got so poked out and you're at such a numbers disadvantage, you have to just retreat back to Phoenix as Team Mercia here. This Team Bulgaria taking their that big swing. Again, we saw it swing for the other team in game one. And now the same thing in reverse. This big swing, Oni Wave still pushing down in left side. They're going to use those to try to get this left tier two. Probably rotate back, get the, go get the back, and then be able to siege on right side. But now Guan Yu going in with the ultimate does get a huge double stun, forcing out the shell. And Diamond, however, despite the, the beautiful work from Guan Yu, Diamond chasing a little bit too far. And the turnaround is good, as Apollo is going to chase down this Guan Yu now. And he's going to be able to get that, most likely. Yep. And that might be... I don't know if it's game quite yet. Depends on whether or not they can pick up either Rom or Yamoja here and they don't die. If they don't lose anybody here, they definitely could at least try for two, three, or maybe all three Phoenixes could go for an end call. Yamoja's not going to be able to defend yet. Yeah, that's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be an end call. Chang'a's there for the sustain. Uh, Chang'a does not have ultimate to stop anybody, but Mori does. Mori could turn into Chang'a to just stop. If necessary, we'll instead turn into Baba Yaga, guaranteeing that GG. And that was just a fatal fight around that tier one. They split up a little bit too far. Too, too far. Um, allowed allowed the allowed Team Bulgaria to find Kamazot to then turn on Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga was like deep chasing, was kind of playing like they played Hebo, which is fair. I mean, like it worked for you on Hebo. It kind of almost worked for you here in this game too but it just wasn't enough here um so far i mean it's pretty close i mean game two again it kinda, we saw the story on repeat close early game into a dominant late game yeah absolutely it was uh, each time there was a fatal team fight and despite changa i don't think being that strong in the current meta the pick into having a Guan Yu, uh, the pick into having a Yemoja means that she, when she's in the thick of things, she's anti-healing with her three. She's healing her own team. She's also just preventing some of that in-combat healing that Guan Yu, that Yemoja are so effective at from being as effective. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely correct. I mean, Chang'a is really, really good at the anti-heal. Um, the other thing is, again, I, I, I've, ta I've talked about it already a lot, but I'm going to talk about it one more time. Uh, Yamoja is just a... It, 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 she's such a good god, except she isn't sometimes. And the only way I can explain that is that if a good team realizes you pick a Yamoja, they just focus her out at the beginning, which is exactly what would happen because Yamoja has no way of getting out of a situation outside of dancing shoes to avoid basics 
um, of one riptide possibly into a stun. And after that, she's pretty much dead and River's Rebuke, which also that team had a really good comp to avoid the River's Rebuke again. So, I mean, Yamoja's just... I'm tentative on what her Yamoja's a first pick. She's definitely a pickup in the first three. I don't know if she's a first pick in a lot of situations. I think also it didn't seem that Nighthawk was as comfortable playing the Yamoja uh, as he was on the Hercules. I think he he was exceptional on the Hercules. So great ban by Team Bulgaria to take that away from him, forcing him onto this god that she, has a pretty high skill ceiling. I his reverse rebukes were not impressive to me. Uh, he missed a lot of his abilities, trolling level one essentially. Uh, and it's one of those characters that you have to demonstrate that you have the capability to play it to its utmost. And Yamoja has such a low floor, high ceiling compared to most other characters in Smite. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. All right, so we're going to take a quick break as we get ready to pull Game 3 out between these two teams, Team Bulgaria versus Team Mercia. This last game is going to decide who drops down to the loser's bracket and who continues forward in the Vulpus EU Cup. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Game 3, the last game of this set in the Volpus EU Cup between Team Mercy and Team Bulgaria. We saw a pretty convincing win from either side, starting with Team Mercia getting a big uh, big fight on the Fire Giant, and then going forward, getting in Game 2, where Team Bulgaria, with a very unconventional composition, managed to, again, swing that fight and get a fire gen end the game pretty early. So now we'll see which which team which team is able to adapt as we do see the Hercules first banned out by Team Bulgaria. I definitely agree with this. I don't think that Nighthawk was very impressive on the Yamoja, but his Hercules was definitely the a uh, huge driving force. As now Team Mercia just going back to the Persephone ban, um I I I agree. I think that the uh, Lucio, you were saying earlier that you wanted the the Morrigan banned out from Team Mercia, right? Yeah, you you need to ban out the Mori. Um, even though it wasn't like super in like it wasn't the most impactful it could have possibly been. It clearly did make an impact by doing things by forcing Mercia to play a certain way. It allowed also Morrigan to have great siege potential. We saw Baba Yaga the Baba Yaga switch at the end. Um, it allowed her to have secures because you had secures. It just gives them way too much versatility. I prefer to see that go. Now, I really like what's coming out of Team Bulgaria. Ban out the Hercules, which so far is what um, Nighthawk has looked the most, the, like, looked absolutely spectacular on. And then also ban out Rom. Instead, we see the Tsukiyomi ban here from Team Mercia. They might pick up the Morrigan if, and we see Set picked up here, which is another thing that wasn't banned out. So Set I mean, if you're not going to have Tsukiyomi, Set's a good... And, okay. We oh, see the boy. Board. Yeah, so <laughs> we Set... We Morgan Hubbard. Double Set. Like, what's scarier than one Set? Another Set. So, looks like Team Bulgaria has figured that. I, I think the Set is much scarier than Tsukiyomi. But, on the other hand, it looks like Team uh team mercia is trying to draft a, a good amount of CC early on to try to disrupt that Set. It'll be interesting to see where that set goes. He is very viable in a bunch of positions. I'm assuming that Morrigan is going to be going in uh, mid lane. And Hachi now picked up in the first three uh, after the Rama banned out in the ADC role, which means that set is going to go either in the jungle or the solo lane. As now Bakasura being hovered for Team Mercia and finally locked in. What do you think of this Bakasura? Um, it's not even what I think about the Bakasura. Uh, I'm going to be real with you. You pick the Cthulhu into a set. That's yeah. going to be hard. Um, I don't know how to put it to you. Set can use Kinsai so well. And Hachi can too. Like, you're, you're forfeiting Cthulhu's life 100% of the time. Um, and now that you have, can have two sets, or you can have a set Cthulhu... Or you can have a set Cupid, or you can have a set Bakasura, right? Like get that pure, get that, get that pure damage, true damage, right? Um, I don't like the Bakasura here. Bakasura doesn't have a really a good way of finding the Morgan, like in set in terms of like finding her invisibility. Um, he doesn't beat Set, and he doesn't beat Hachiman because Hachiman just ults out. So I would have much preferred to see a Humbats here. I would have much preferred to see even a Mercury. Somebody else who can have that disruption, have that really good fight, that chase. Even a Susano would have been really good here because you have so much disruption for the set that's going to be diving. You have so much ways of just doing massive amounts of damage in an AoE that can at least maybe put out damage on Morrigan. But we also see, you know, Bulgaria fi finds three really solid bands, finds Hercules. Finds Rom and finds Hebo. Um, that's t that's gonna be tough for Mercia. They find they they ban out Kepri and Sobek on the other end, but I mean it's tough when three of your best gods just get thrown out. Yeah, I agree. And usually I think into a set like it sucks playing into a set, but the way that set struggles is when every one of your characters has a lot of CC, and Bakasura does not have a lot of CC. We do see Team. M uh, Bulgaria ban out Iagog again with the Habwa and the uh, the Scylla. I would have thought that maybe instead of picking that Bakasura early, maybe getting Yagog on one of his comfort picks like Habwa would have been much better. 
Like, if Set goes on Habwa, sure, he has a water carpet already, so preventing the slow, and then he just ults through you and, and kills you, it's very tough to deal with. As now, on Team Bulgaria, we see a couple hovers that may be troll hovers. We see Loki and Opwash being hovered um, in response to the set that, or sorry, into the Horus that came in from the uh, Team Mercia. As nope, they are troll hovers as we will lock in the hell. And now we're hovering the Achilles on the side of Team Bulgaria, which will get locked in. Oh man, this is a, this is a nightmare situation. This is an anti-Cthulhu comp. No, this is an anti everything they're trying to do. This is absolute nightmare. Um, hell is gonna out sustain Horus and Cupid a hundred percent of the time. You can have two hells because you have Morgan. Um, Achilles is just gonna kill Cthulhu. Set's gonna kill Cupid. Morgan as Set is gonna kill Bakasura. Morgan as Set is gonna kill Nuwa. Um, this is a nightmare scenario for Team Mercia. This is one of those situations where. You know, so far none of the drafts pick bands have been um have been crazy. Um but until now. Until this now what we always like, love about game threes. You see a lot of targeted bands in game threes, which means a lot of those high priority picks get let through. And then we'll just have to see how Team Bulgaria is able to pilot this game, these uh these picks. They are very potent for sure. I would expect, I want to see Team Mercia really lean onto this solo lane and shut down this hell. She, strugg she is so strong from being ahead and struggles so heavily being behind. If they're able to get um, the, the Cthulhu ahead, that means that he has a good matchup into hell, he can pressure her out, and eventually that could maybe lead to a lot of plays in the team fight stage but if hell gets ahead then even it doesn't matter how much damage you do because hell is just there to resustain your entire team yeah i mean i team mercy like i'm gonna be real 100 percent real they have to play this perfectly they have to play this perfectly uh there is so many paths to victory that team bulgaria have here in every single team fight and every single engagement that they will have that team mercia does not have the luxury of they can only um it, it, it's just gonna be really hard because horus doesn't even have anybody good to ult in like he ults in cthulhu cthulhu comes in he ults kirkito is just gonna be like okay kin sized procs now or if he wants to go ability damage heart seeker either way he's gonna do really really well um, this is just gonna be a tough situation. Yeah, I agree. I think, uh, I, I don't necessarily expect to see Kinsai's picked up by Krakito. There's gonna be plenty enough, uh, time on Hachiman to pick that up. And Set is just so strong because he doesn't even need a lot of those damage items. You can build him relatively tanky and he still does so much damage just by being able to stick on you with the ult. But we do see the Achilles coming in, blinking in, trying to get the ghost minion does get a incidental stun onto a couple other uh of uh team mercia achilles is I, I actually like him a lot in this support role i think he brings a lot of just early pressure it just feels really bad when you miss that one yeah. but as horus we don't see a lot like horus he is, he is the most guardian of all the warriors, I would say. He does not bring the same amount of pressure. Sure, he has some heals, he has some sustain, but early game, this this lane is going to be dominated by this Achilles. Yeah, my level 3 thing should start evening up as Horus will get access to all parts of his um, all parts of his kit and a lot of CC that's going to come out of that. Um so we are going to see an early gank here coming out of bakasura but i'm not sure exactly what he's going to find as hachi does have a good dash away and cupid is nowhere this might be the end of horus nope cupid is there no, baka's the coming Kito. in but the on the other is end, here. they're set set gonna do set things but without the level five set is set is one of those characters that he is a his ult is what makes him terrifying. Yes, he does a lot of damage without it, but once he gets that ultimate, that's where he becomes...
come is just so potent. And I want to see a lot of early anti-heal on the side of Team Mercia. Yes, sure, they have their own healing, but the amount of healing on the on Team Bulgaria with the Hell, with the set, um, is going to make it very difficult if they don't get anti-heal on as soon as possible. So we do see Newell already starting into the the focus, allowing for maybe the, the uh, Divine Ruin. Achilles taking some poke here. Yeah. And I mean, just Achilles going back doesn't home. care. Achilles doesn't yeah. care about taking poke. I mean, he has really good sustain in his uh, in his comp and in his uh, in his kit, so he'll be okay. Yeah, and I had like we saw both junglers come to the dual lane. I wouldn't say that's the place that I want to see Bakasura. I said it early on. I want to see Bakasura really leaning onto this hell, and so far he has not really been spending much time there. Yeah, I also want. It, it's either that or I want to see Boxer hyper farm, like just straight up hyper farm. That way, when he's rotating in, his levels are so high that he just does what he wants, right? Um, it doesn't seem like either one of those things is happening. He's looking at the dual lane. It's just so hard to kill a Hachiman, especially when an Achilles is there to just count, just to just to say stop. Um, so I don't know. Lua forced into her ult early. Make sure that she's able to get underneath the tower, but still loses half her health in trade with the set. Yeah, it does now, basically no damage. Yeah, now Hell has full boost online. Um, also started with that uh, that tier one. As Bakasura coming in, they are looking at Achilles. He is going to be crippled out. I don't know if he has his jump, but Bakasura misses his leap, able to still secure the kill. But is he going to be able to get out? Set has very low mana. Most likely, yes, but Yagog's already booking it out of there. He's like, see you later, man. Good luck. I'm surprised we didn't see a Morgan transformation into a new wall there just to put down one metal shard and then ult. Yeah, Horus kind of leaning around the backside. Looks like Cthulhu is forced into his ult here. I don't see him killing this hell with this ultimate. But now Horus taking a bunch of poke already from the Morrigan. But now Morrigan's used her kit. He's gonna transform into Cupid, getting a huge ult. And now Horus dashing in with a heart bomb on him to his teammate. His teammate's like, get away from me, bro. <laughs> Yeah, that's just unfortunate right there. Nuwa doesn't have ults available to kind of at least secure the kill there onto the Morgan. Morgan able to just, um, just gonna get away. Sneak away, yeah. Now Hell doing the pressure that she's she's so good at. Once she has any little, even not even even, she has double the abilities that you do, given that she's a stance changer. And as long as she has mana with with this build, she will. And with the blue buff, so now. Baka going in, trying to steal the blue buff away, but not going to be able to get it. He's going to give up his life. Hell, working through the sustain, but Set doing so much work. He able to turn around on one for two. He might find this third one. Looks like Horus is able to dash away. Very safe. But getting the beads onto the Nuwa as well. I don't think she needed to do that. Now she has no beads left for the stun that Morgan's going to hit her with. And that means both of them go down. Oof, man. This is, like, this is, again, the nightmare scenario. Like, Set is basically showing his presence that is going to be a two-level lead on the on it. And now it's going to be a almost a K gold difference this early on, six minutes in. Now, I say that. And Krakito gets caught out as Bakasura just jumps and ults and finds him right then and there. Yeah, Set, Cripple is so strong against Set because he, re he really relies on being able to use his three to get away. No other intrinsic mobility. Once he gets caught out by that Bakasura, that's a dead set. That will allow uh, Diamond to start trying to claw back this lead. You want to see Bakasura ahead, and, and he's not been able to really do that this game. Getting caught up, bad decision making in some ways on the blue buff, but now this team is here ready for gold fury. They said that with that kill onto Krakito, that they are confident enough to get the gold and they're able to kill it. Very, very nice. Um, Bulgaria a little bit slow to the take of like, oh wait, they're not in lane. 
I mean, that, to be fair, it is a seven minute goal here. It's that was a really fast turnaround into the goal, basically taking advantage that it's early on. It's going to be a little bit shock value. Very nicely done. Now we do see Morgan turn into the set looking for this horse puts down so much damage, but not going to yeah. find much else. If she was, I think she tried to force that uh, too early. If she was able to get a little bit more poke on before transforming his set, but it's a good damage check to see like just how effective that's going to be. Because once, if she would have hit uh, Horus with, you know, her Dark Omens or anything before making that transformation, that would have been a dead Horus. Yeah, I agree there. I mean, things are going to quiet down a little bit as now there's no objective on the map. Gold Fury done. Um, yeah, I say I that and now we look fun, at Cthulhu. Yeah. Cthulhu, the other objective on the map. Well, it looks like Team Bulgaria is going to try, but Cthulhu, once he's in his ultimate form, so hard to lock down. Nuwa does go up into the air just to give some vision, maybe see if she can finish off that Morrigan, but not quite yet. But it looks like the dive is real. The, the Bacchus are going in with the Horus. Horus able to finish off the Morrigan there, but is he going to be able to get out? Achilles is chasing, and so is uh, Set here. Set, Set's going to make this very difficult. Good Cupid ult to try to get the set out, uh, sort of to get the Bacchusera out, but unfortunately he does fall, and now Cupid's in trouble without that ult for his own. Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble here. Dash should be coming up soon, though, so he should be out. Yeah. So, in the end, it was, a, I believe, a one-for-one one trade, Morrigan for the Bakasura. Yeah, I think that's okay. I don't know. I don't feel that uh, shutting down this Morrigan, she's, as long as Set is able to get his abilities and his uh, items online, when she transforms into him, even if she's two levels behind, she's still going to do huge amounts of damage. So I don't think that necessarily shutting down this Morrigan early is that impactful compared to maybe getting the other mage on the map. Yeah, it, it, this is a tough part of um, playing against here. And we see, we're about to see the set do work, but this time as Morgan. And there is Achilles ready to bring down the pain if necessary. Finds a nice stun on Oh my god. That, those clones just. Oh no. Is she gonna, oh, it. almost getting a three. But don't worry, now here's set again. The real set. That being said, Cupid just dropped his ult, sets uh, Hachiman able to finish that off. So a one for four trade at the end, I believe. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm just going to touch on what you just touched on a little bit. I don't care who you kill. If it's not this set, you're not winning. Um, Because this set is basically running it at this point. Uh... He is, when he needs to be there, he'll be there. He's playing out massive amounts of damage. He's going to go ahead and take that two-level lead back. He's 5-1-1. One, and one. This is a point in the game where you look and you say, okay, where's the problem? The problem's not Morgan. It's set. Um, and, and now things are going to get that much harder as Bulgaria does take a 3k XP lead and almost a 2k gold lead. And 10 minutes into the game, while it's not devastating, it's not um, absolutely demolishing yet it is going to be something that they have to be concerned about taking any fights now because you're you're almost guaranteed that most of that lead is going to be in that set that first gold fury sneak away is is something that you can't really do a lot about but now team mercia will have the timer for the gold fury the, i assume that they'll be there in force to make sure that it doesn't go down as now they get good poke on the new law who's caught out and is going to end up falling and with it doesn't matter if you new law alt and get so much poke because once hell rotates over there's still going to be enough healing however she's stuck in dual lane finally making the rotation as krakito does get shut down so aegog for krakito i think that's definitely a win for team mercy especially given that uh new already got her alt down but now big fight from Bakasura, able to get a triple kill, or a killing spree rather, it looks like one of those did go the way of, uh, 
as now Cthulhu coming in, able to make the space that uh, killing Sagar. Bakasura going for that speed buff invade. And now let's see what Team Mercia is able to do with this huge swing. They're going for the Oni Fury. A little that too was, early. That was just such a good engagement here from Team Mercia. They found the set, they're able to pressure that into the rest, and they completely flipped the script. You know, we were just talking about the XP difference. You can look at it right now in the grabs. It looks like a daggone roller coaster. Um, yeah, and they followed your advice. Once you get that set out of the picture, he was taken out very early, and the rest of the team, yeah, they have a little, they had a little bit of an XP lift lead, but the majority of that lead was on the set. And without the set there, it's going to be very hard for Team Bulgaria to be able to do a lot. And I mean, it was difficult there because you also did a really good job from Team Mercia to force out Morgan's ult when Morgan didn't want to ult. Morgan ults in the set there out of desperation. Basically like, oh, crap, I'm going to die. I need to get out of here. Now, it didn't work out because Nuwa, when you're grouped up like that, has a lot of good damage. But still, here we go. We're seeing Set do what Set does best. Looking for the damage. Doesn't find Beautiful. it, but don't hey, worry. Dude. The Horseman is here with the archery. And we'll yeah. get that. That was a great Aegis by Cupid to be able to live long enough to turn that around onto, uh, onto Krakito. But now... Hell is being chased down by this Bakasura. He's he's hastened. She is slow. They should be able to get this kill. They should be able to get this tier one tower with Oni minions as well. And there looks like there's Horus left to defend the left lane. So it looks like the this uh, mid and sorry this jungler and soul lane are rotating over to mid. Almost able to catch the back from Achilles. And that was really good, though, from Team Bulgaria to find something on the map because they knew where everybody was positioned. They knew ha the set was dead, Hachiman was in left, and you had Bakasura and Cthulhu in right, which means that, hey, dive the new wa, Get get him. Um, so, yeah, and as really much good. work as Ayagog did in the first two games, he has been largely neutered this game, having a little bit of a level deficit. Uh not really able to get a lot of those items online 03 and 6 of course she's going to be able to get free damage from just pressing 4 but the effectiveness of new wise where you're able to come in with your stealth you're able to get those roots from your passive as now we see horus getting ready to ult hachiman does catch it out able to use his bead they do get the beads he's able to ult out of there as well and looks like they're not going to be able to stick around for this purple invade as Morgan transforms into Set, Horus is uh, Horus is kind of caught in no man's land, and Cupid's got to run. Yeah, gotta look for his Horus now. The Cupid did make his way away. And now Horus is gone. Yeah, I think that if they had just turned onto that Horus earlier, they could have gotten the gotten the kill. As Set, the real Set, able to use his ultimate in mid lane, but Nuwa, Nuwa damage is pretty good. Both both of them get out barely with their lives. New one, fortunately, no ult, but correct. Romeo is here to shut down Krakito. Yeah, really good rotation out of Cthulhu when he needed a beater. Now they're both caught up in no man's land with nobody really to save them. Kind of like what you were talking about. Horse, horse might get the executed. Nope, doesn't happen. Now they get to just turn on the Achilles. And this is where, man, it's seeming like Bulgaria is trying to force things that aren't there right now like they're, they're a little bit they felt the impact of set going on early on like they were like oh man we got set we got set and now they're trying things when there's not really those opportunities quite yet yeah and i think a lot of it comes down to the way red star has been too uh over eager on using that ultimate as morrigan the be the best way of i feel playing morrigan is getting in with your base kit your mage kit doing a full rotation with your mage kit, and then transforming. She transforms way far away, trying to use the the ultimate to maybe get a little bit of mobility. Horus here with the zone. Looks like they do go in the back line. Able Mercy is able to secure the fire giant. Now it's the fight after afterwards. The back line for Mercy is kind of left alone as they're struggling to group back up, but Set, already having used his ult, now is gonna 
the Morganist that is going to die. Krakito does turn around and get a kill onto Bakasura on the other side. But now I think there's not really much potential. Maybe they get this tier 1 in mid, that's, which is on its last leg. But now with Horus being in place, they're not going to necessarily going to be able to chase out. But once the rest of this team comes together, Sagar, I don't think they can keep up this pressure here in round. No, not right now. And I mean, I liked what Mercy was doing. They were looking for a zone, but they didn't really need to dedicate that much. I think the Kadu just being there was fine. Horus shouldn't have gone in. That way Horus could peel for that back line. Kind of like what you were calling about. Um, because honestly, the, you knew you weren't going to be able to take that fight right after Fire Giant. You don't have the sustain necessary. Um, now that uh, we have Hell going full healing, means that also she's going to be able to push the tempo really, really well into that Fire Giant fight. So Team Mercy there, I, what I'm trying to say, I think was lucky it didn't go that well. Yeah. And, and Hell, just in her kit, basically allows you to have the, essentially another Fire Giant. The amount of sustain that she gives the entire team throughout is equivalent to, or probably better than the sustain that you get from Fire Giant buff. Meaning that normally you get worried about, okay, we're going into a Fire Giant team, they're going to poke us out, we're not going to be able to do anything because they're going to sustain. Well, this time, even if they poke us out, we have Hell. Hell can just bring us back up to full, and we're ready to fight. So it looks like we do see two, mem two members in left pushing in this tier one, two members in mid, and... Uh, actually, three members coming together here, all going down on that left side. I like this. I think that there's, this is going to be an important siege. If Team Mercy is able to hold this siege, that's going to be a big swing, uh, given that they already get the Tier 1 tower in mid. Tier 1 tower in left is very low, meaning that some of this gold that they're going to be able to get back. Horus is forced into this right side which means this is a true 4v5 now. Yes, sure, there's a Fire Giant on Team uh, Mercy's side, but they're looking to just clear towers, it looks like. They they said that the Horus had to go back that neutered the Siege onto left, and now they're just finishing towers. That's smart. Try to get yourself in a good position for the next Fire Giant. Yeah, clear towers, and then you can, you can reset, turn for a bigger siege around things. It looks like they're going to do a tier 2 defense, though, on the side of Bulgaria. And they have the comp for it, so this isn't a terrible decision, but now they're going to back away. They're just going to soft defend and turn back to the Phoenix. Wait until Mercio makes a mistake. I really like this call from Team, from team Bulgaria. Just kind of hover around, basically saying, hey, if you make a mistake, we're here. Um... What I don't like here from Team Mercy is that I feel like you should push the tempo when you have a wave pushing out left. Because as you can see, this is going to shift the attention of Team Bulgaria. And you could have forced a split issue. You could have forced them to say, do we defend left Phoenix or do we defend right Phoenix when you're sieging that right right side? But it's not a terrible call either to do Pyro and then, um, and then back and reset, get all your items online. You know sell as much as you can but things you know things aren't mercia's mercia you know despite the gold lead is not out of the woods yet set is still level 20. sure hell is not level 19. uh it's not at the same level as the cthulhu but hell is still gonna have her utility just based off of the heals now that she has rod of his done um and maury just has ability she just could be whoever she needs to be in a, any given situation. I think the biggest concern here for Team Bulgaria is that their support isn't high enough level to be as tanky as the Horus here. And that's the only real concern I think they should have. I think I would be very worried if I was Team Mercia on this siege because if it goes badly, Team Bulgaria can chase down like nothing else. They have a group speed buff with Hell's 3. They have Horus and uh, Hachiman, both of which have uh, the ability to slow the opponent's team. Horus, uh, sorry, uh, Hachiman being able to catch up very quickly. It's really going to be, if, if something goes badly, Horus needs to get his ult up early and just get the team out of there. Because if they don't, if they're caught straggling, they will end up dying to this chase down from Bulgaria. But now with Fire Giant worn off, they're ready for a full 5v5 at the Fire Giant. Good ward vision from Team Mercia. 
but with all three Phoenixes up, Team Bulgaria is definitely up to defend. Horus, kind of by himself in mid lane here, potentially gonna get caught out. He is, uh... I don't like. Yeah, and that forces Diamonds to come in to try to help his Horus, and that means now they can just switch onto Diamond, who gets poked out. If, if Krakito's got... He misses that Skewer, so likely not gonna be able to finish that kill. Now, it's just... That Horus positioning forced this team fight into an awkward kind of uh, engagement instead of the nice engagement that they were hoping to get at the fire giant. Yeah, and I, there was no reason for Horus to be there, um, just to be honest. And you do now force all of your team to ult, which means that now Team Bulgaria can really press the press the tempo. You're split up. Cthulhu's caught up here. And you've opened up the entire map for Team Bulgaria because of that positioning. The entirety of the map is open because now you have no ult. You have no ult online. Achilles still has his ult. Um, Hell is just going to always be a value. Oh. Even Set doesn't necessarily need his ult at this point to be doing damage. Like, he has a lot going on. He has the Heartseeker online, but I mean, he will be doing lots of damage. We do see Fatal Strike come out of Achilles to escape. Now that Team Mercy has been able to regroup, kind of get all their ultimates on, back online. And I'm a little bit surprised Team Bulgaria doesn't do more with that window of opportunity. Yeah, I think that they were a little uncomfortable knowing that there was five men uh, up for Team Mercy. They were coming back with full health. But they get the Gold Fury. That allows them to get a good amount of that lead that they had lost back on their side. Now only a 5k deficit instead of a 8.5k. 5k is one that you're starting to be able to fight into. And really at this point, whenever you're so behind at this level, you just have to get as much farm as you can. It doesn't matter what the rest of the team gets. When you get to a position where you can fight. Bakister are doing a lot of work in the back line. Able to get out. And now set in, in the back line for Team Mercy. As uh, he's, he's zoned out. Actually Morrigan, sorry, as set. But now she's in her invisibility. She's she does get revealed, and she is going to get taken down. So this is a almost a full wipe for Team Bulgaria. They're going for this fire giant. I wonder if maybe they. I guess that's okay. They're all here. I wonder if they maybe couldn't have gone for uh, another objective like the uh, the phoenixes, as everyone else is going to be coming up within 10-15 seconds. They do push down right. They don't have any minion waves, really, to tank these phoenixes, and this fire giant is not enhanced, meaning that there is going to be full backdoor protection. Nuwa's going to have some play soldiers to help tank, but we need some set kind of in the back line, just left alone. These guys are ignoring the set. I, I, I mean, I don't know what how they were split pushing either, because, I mean, this phoenix should already been down, but since they didn't have the Cupid or the Bakasura here to just do that... Kind of a disjointed thing. Now, Cthulhu's kind of poked out. I would not be surprised if they kill this Cthulhu just outright looking for him. Instead, Achilles looks like he's the one going down. No, Bakasura will get that kill on the Achilles. Looking for more damage. Able to find Gets Hell the... as well. Cthulhu, now that's a double kill. And yeah, Morgan's helping out. The end game? No, Krikito's Maybe. still in the back line. He's full health. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh no. I don't know, this, this is gonna is be gonna a gonna dicey end call. Oh no. They really set. need to shut down this set. He is healing so much. And again, no brawlers. A couple divine ruins, but now we do have a toxic blade, but Bako is already got, uh, gone. And now with four members down, just Morrigan left here to defend. Looks like Team Mercia is DPSing the Titan. It's at half health. It's gonna be very hard for her to do anything, especially without an ultimate here. She's buying enough time though. This is insane. Like, they do find enough time. Achilles is back. Just take the Phoenix at this point. No, they're not. They're not going to take the yeah, Phoenix. This Cupid they're just back. backing. This, I don't uh. like this call. I think that they, yes, I did like the end call. They just weren't able to get the full damage on without, without Bakasura there, without Ayagog. Ayagog was killed by that set. That was such an important kill for them to be able to hold on. Yeah, I now. mean, it was, but, like, also, they didn't even do the, uh, I don't know, man, that's just tough, that's a, just a tough situation, they had the end call right then and there, they had the end in their hands, um, 
and they still weren't necessarily able to get it all the way that's just that just sucks and i mean i think that really comes down to also they don't have that many um but you they know what have... they do have on their on their side is they do have horus horus and bakasura alt are very potent which means that team bulgaria cannot get out of their titan area if they the bakasura finds the set gets the cripple off set's going to be able to get away and now they're not going to be able to chase so that's a lot expended for you know, 50 percent health on the set set with that uh sledge tanky enough and with the blood forge to get some of that lifesteal tanky enough to uh be able to withstand that bakasura dive but now horus looking to ult this team sees it so it depends on where horus is going to go they go right into That's the titan a big pit. old stun wow they and waited Cupid for it they're already. not going to do enough damage they're not going to no. do it uh, oh no oh my gosh i don't know what sanguine. happened this oh no all over again. Yeah, yeah 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 that early kill onto Cupid was so impactful that how much health did that titan have Oh had like, no, had to have, had to be a hundred, yeah, it was a yeah. hundred, no man, oh jeez, I would have preferred, instead of everybody going in like the way they did, they had somebody straggling, like walking in instead of going straight for the, for the Horus ult, oh no, that is just a sanguine throw right there, they almost get it, I think now this with 20 seconds for most of these players to come back up. I don't this know. Is they're GG. Like, it I don't might know. Because like, they're going to be able to just straight up kill Cupid. If, oh, man. I don't know. If it's they're GG. backing off. They don't want to. They yeah. saw what happened trying to all in the Titan by Team Mercia. They don't want to face the same thing. They have Achilles in the right side trying to get that Phoenix up. Bring this to an even game because once you're at 30 minutes, everyone's getting level 20. Achilles is the only level 19. He's going to hit level 20 probably off this wave and everyone's getting full build, all that work that Team Mercia did is gone. Now Team Mercia is at basically equivalent to Team Bulgaria. All leads be gone. Now what went from an 8k lead to a 3k lead, 3k means nothing at this point in the game. Yeah, no, this is a, this is definitely a means nothing type of deal. And now that that Phoenix is back up, what's more important about that is that the Titan's gonna get some of that health back. Um, now I do like that Team Mercy immediately going for the FG. I would hold on to it for I five seconds. I would hold on seconds. before, exactly. Oh, no. they don't. That's three seconds away and there was no one nearby. I, I think that was a big mis misplay by Team Mercy. Like, just yeah, they why... definitely had the space and time to do it. Yeah, they're, they're, I think, getting in their heads. Like, you saw from the Horus Alt that play, like, they're... They're already kind of tilted. They they're playing too hasty, not using their brain. They just got to see red in their eyes, and, and Team Bulgaria is trying to take advantage of. Krakita goes in. He does eventually get killed. A lot of damage onto the back line means that Iagog gets uh, gets killed. But Cthulhu creating so much space now. If he's able to get out with the fire giant buff, but Hell is there and she is sustaining and carrying her team. And it looks like a big turnaround like i said this chase potential from this team is massive horus gonna go into the ult he's coming up down trying to turn us around onto morrigan he is able to turn it around so it's a three for three but i would still put any any such fight on the victory for bulgaria as now they have fire minions coming into the titan meanwhile team mercy's uh team mercy's titan is getting hit by fire minions versus bulgaria their phoenixes are up they don't even have to worry yeah, and they're chasing hard to make sure that Cupid and, Cupid and Horus cannot back. They're trying to find an kill onto this Achilles. Titan didn't take too, too much damage. We'll start he He's still taking a lot of damage, though. Yeah, that's a huge amount of fire minions. He's already at half health. Finally, these two from Team uh, Mercy are able to get the back off. But that entire fire giant fight was completely neutralized. That means that, okay, well, now... We have another five minutes or four minutes until there's a real fight. Three minutes, actually, until there's a real fight. And Mercia is on the de on the defensive. They are the ones that have to watch out for the fire minions pushing down their their left side. They are the ones that are going to have to make sure that they don't get all in. 
Yeah, Team Bulgaria is doing a great job of taking advantage of Mercia's engage. So, I, I do want to, I'm going to rewind a little bit. Well, actually a lot. Going into that first engage around that Phoenix on the right side. Um, what you have is essentially Cthulhu goes immediately in. He goes immediately deep. Which allows Set to basically blink in. Well, not blink in, no. He doesn't blink in. He teleports in using his sandstorm and that opens up that entire back line to set and while set does die he puts out with so much damage onto the cupid and new one that they had to back away which really opened up the rest of the fight for him yeah and i think sagar being able to get in there um is tanky enough to be able to withstand be a frontliner she does have like Lotus Crown, she has the Genji, she has the Spirit Rope. That gives her enough defensive capability that she can be up there and not worry about getting one shot, but she still has a lot of magic power, a lot of healing with the Asclepius, with the Ethereal Staff, uh, and she's got a lot of cooldown, which means that she, she can just boost her team forward, and now Team Mercy is going to have to play the defensive game. There's, there's another wave of Fire Minions that's coming down left side, and this should be a pretty easy tier two for Team Bulgaria. Horus oh, looks no. like, or Cthulhu looks like he's, he is not on the same page. He gets executed by Achilles. I'm not even sure he's reading the same book at that point. Like, the, none of his team was Yeah, in there. at this point, there's no point staying at a tier two. Yeah. Oh Horus no, now going Horus in by himself. In. Good Cupid all. They're trying to catch this Achilles, but... They're not going to be able to do much. Nuance not that like back. a good. I like the horse ult because it does buy that time for that for that siege, but I also don't like it because now there's nothing to follow up this this uh, Bakasura that's just going to die from the new wall transformation. Now they do find Hachiman though, so that means that siege potential is going to go down quite a bit. But you still have Set. Set can you know hold left click. He's pretty good at it. Horse yep, might yep. go down. Not quite. Yes, indeed. That leaves two to defend the Titan room, possibly three, as Romeo will be back in time. Yeah, just the carries left. And again, I think that Team Bulgaria is playing this very smartly. They know that they have time to sustain. They're setting a trap here for Cthulhu. Cthulhu just walking in without having a care in the world, forced into his ultimate. And even with that ultimate, he does back off the ultimate early so that he can get his dash off, which is a smart move, because if he had stayed in that ultimate, he was dead. Ooh. Oh no, Sagar getting the kill onto Trazodone, which means that, again, that's only two members left. You do have Diamond coming up in four seconds. I just have to but... question again, what, Cthulhu, what is Cthulhu doing there? Like, why is he pushed up without his carry? Like, there's just no reason to do that. You're on defense situation. You kind of have to sit back and just wait. Like, there's no... Like, it's Cthulhu. What's he going to do pushing up like that against four? Um, and then going into the ultimate immediately, he should have just dashed. Yeah, I think he was trying to use the ultimate for CC immunity because uh, the Morgan was about to stun him. Um... So, but it was smart to use the ultimate and then come back out of it immediately uh, to be able to get your dash up. That's something that a lot of Cthulhu players don't do well enough. Once they think they're in the ult and they're in god mode, they're like, I don't want to give this up. But sometimes you just got to remember that you do have mobility in your base kit. But this creates the amount of space needed for Bulgaria to start the EFG. And there are a couple members of Mercia coming to defend. Cthulhu dashes in able to zone everyone off the EFG. The EFG is still pretty low, but it's starting to regen. He's back out to like 50% as Cthulhu forced into his ultimate. I don't necessarily like this ultimate here. He's creating space, but the rest of his team is not nearby. Another time where Romeo, I feel like, is not on the same page with his team. Yeah, this is going to open up the rest of this fight. Horus does dash in. Does have his other dash available, so he's not too, too bad. I... But losing that Cthulhu ult um, is not going to be bueno. Now Nuwana, a bad situation as well. 
Yeah, as Morrigan transforms into the Bakastura to try to finish off the... Or sorry, Bakastura kills the Morrigan. It's confusing with all these transformations here. Uh, yeah, Morgan we... had transformed into Nuwa to kill Nuwa. Baka gets new gets Morgan, but Morgan had thrown her two on, which means that uh, any damage was gonna kill Cthulhu, or maybe Cthulhu. That I don't know. There's a lot of transformations, yeah. and especially when it's new was, it gets really confusing because everybody's everywhere. That's right. But Bulgaria having that hell on their team. Like I said, that's like a fire giant in a character, essentially. They're coming back to try to get the real fire giant, as now, again, Team Mercia have that left Phoenix exposed. They need someone to be there to prevent the uh, the Phoenix from going down. I'm surprised that Bulgaria is going for Pyro here instead of actual fire. They see this Bakasura, I guess they send the set back. But this gives time for Mercia to get their Phoenix up if Cupid stays back. He's he realizes that he's got to be there. Hopefully, I don't know what this Cupid's doing. This this is about to spawn. It looks like he's gonna leave Yagog to clear out the fire minions on the left side. But that's three waves of fire minions that are gonna be coming in. Is Bakasir working to try to solo the Oni Fury? However, Set here, Set might be able to steal this pretty easily. I would think. Yep. yep, and Set just gets it with a skewer. I mean, there's no good secure. And without Horus there to zone, I mean, Horus was just there tanking the, the Fury. This means that there's going to be, after this last fire wave, there's going to be an Oni wave following. And this is going to be really hard to defend this fire giant. Yeah, they're all split up. There's three around gold. There's two here. Well, now one back. So they're trying to fight Set. If any of them die against Set, while Cthulhu's over here, then that's no bueno. Looks like two Set will can die 2v1, against one, Set. Yeah. Set can easily 1v2 at this point. Oh no. This is probably game for Team Bulgaria. As long as they don't, they are not overextending, they have this game in the bag, likely. Yeah, I don't even know how they how they lose it. There's no way that Cupid and, and Bakasura deal enough damage to all five members of Bulgaria here to stop this siege. They have a hell. They don't even have the CC because hell hell, hell has to cleanse. Like yeah, and they're uh, there's in just that. no way. And with 28 seconds, 24 seconds left on on Romeo, and already Diamond being taken out of the fight, this looks like it's going to be. A win for Team Bulgaria, pulling out the reverse sweep, if you can, if you can call it, after the first loss to Team Mercia. The next yeah. two games, pretty pretty solid, and even this game, they were behind so much, but just good discipline. While Team Mercia just kind of gave up on discipline, having all their players kind of go in at weird times. Especially, I'm looking at the Cthulhu, but good game. Yeah, I think that, um, yeah, it's just one of those things that it's tough because I think Mercia lost on the mental game after after having such a lead and then turning, getting turned on in that Titan. That Titan, it is one of those times where your mental has to be like at peak to kind of overcome that and still keep going. But instead, it just felt like Mercia got it threw out their rule book, threw out all the plays and said, we're just going to do something about it. Because until then, they had been playing extremely, really, extremely well. But yeah, they got splitting tilted up at that. Fights, splitting up I fights think, was not the play. Yeah, it looks like they just got tilted at that fire, that uh, Titan defense. Once that happened, then they tried some, you know, reckless plays. The Horus assault in, again, almost worked. But that's like, when you are when you get rebuffed twice, that's like... You're right. That's a you need a iron strong discipline to be able to withstand the mental damage that that does. And Mercia were not able to. Not this time. Nope. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for this game of the EU Cup from Vulpus Esports. This has been Sam Cobra and Lucio, and the cameraman has been Rosie. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll, we'll see you next time.